ladies, this is your stop. Thank you kindly, sir. So what brings you ladies to the ski lodge? We're just planning to have a nice ski weekend, sir. Our parents are away with business, but they plan to meet up with us soon. You best hope they don't get mixed up in the storm. It's gonna be a real blizzard later. Well, we pray that they make it out okay. You two have fun now. Goodbye, sir. He's real cute. Do you think he was flirting with me? Allie, do you think any boy that's being remotely nice to you in the slightest bit is flirting with you? Don't get your hopes up. Well, a girl can dream, can't she? Ooh, get me inside already. I'm freezing my butt off out here. Pipe down, will ya? No one wants to hear your whining, especially in the quiet chalet. Oh, Cindy, why you must you be so mean to me? It's no wonder your boyfriend broke up with you. Excuse me, for the record, I broke up with Derek. He didn't break up with me. He was just far too attached. So much so, it got kind of scary sometimes. And you know how bad his temper was. Yeah, yeah. Don't act like you're so innocent either. You have quite the temper as well. If you ask me, you're a match made in heaven. Hey, whose side are you on anyway? Oh, hello. You must be Cindy and Allie. My, what beautiful young girls you are. William, we have guests. Oh, hello, hello. Well, aren't you girls just cute as the dickens? Uh, thanks. Darling, where are your manners? Why, these girls are probably freezing. We should take their coats and start a fresh fire for them now. <clears throat> yes, my apologies, ladies. I'll take your coats if you'd like. Well, thank you kindly, Mr... Mr. Davidson. But you can call me William, and this is my wife, Carol. Hi. I'll put your bags and coats in room one, which is where you'll be staying, if that's all right. In the meantime, why not stay in the chalet, cozy up a little bit, get warm. Well, thank you, sir. Gee, didn't mom and dad hit the jackpot with this place or what? What service? Come with me, girls. I'll get the fire started for you and I'll make you some warm hot chocolate. My, this is quite the chalet you have here, Carol. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. My husband and I made it in the 50s. It was originally just for the two of us, but then it got a little lonely and we decided to make a profit off of it and have a bed and breakfast kind of place for tourists. Well, that's awful generous of you. Well, nothing warms my heart more than making people happy. Speaking of warm, the fire's all ready. I'll make you girls some hot chocolate. Make yourself at home. Huh, I don't know about you, Cindy, but I could definitely get used to this. This is the life. It is quite nice, isn't it? I just hope Mom and Dad are making that out okay. It's too bad Derek can't be here to enjoy this with you. Would you mind not rubbing it in, please? What? He was cute. Maybe you should give him a second chance. Maybe he'll change for the better. Forget it. If I'm lucky, he won't even come up here this weekend. I told him about this trip last week when we planned it out. With my luck, he'll probably try to come up here and beg for forgiveness. Life for you must be so difficult. Some of us don't even have boyfriends. Here's your hot chocolate, ladies. Thanks, Carol. Why, it's my pleasure. I do wonder what's taking William so long. I hope he's not getting himself in trouble. Say, it is sure is quiet in here. Is everyone else asleep? Everyone else? Oh, what a laugh. I'm afraid you girls are the only guests we have tonight. Really? But why? Well, with the blizzard and everything, I'm afraid no one really wants to get snowed in. Oh dear, is it going to be that bad? Oh, don't you worry a hair on your pretty little head, darling. Even if we do get snowed in, I'm sure we'll have a wonderful time. Easy now, buddy. It's going to be okay. Darling, what's going on? One of these gentlemen had a ski accident. Oh dear. We'll have a seat, please. All right, son, what appears to be the damage? The two of us were skiing down the mountains earlier today and the snow got so heavy, it was hard to see. I tripped over a rock and it must have sprained my ankle. It took us hours to find the next chalet. Will you please help us? But of course. Oh, you poor thing. William, won't you bring him to his room? Right then, come along, son. Do you need help? No, of course not, you're our guest. You two have had quite the journey. You both need relaxation. So much for a quiet night. Well then, it appears you girls will have some company after all. And just what might your name be? My name is Brandon. That was my buddy Justin over there. We'd hate to inconvenience you and your husband. Oh nonsense, it's what we do. Allow me to make you a fresh cup of hot cocoa. I'll be right back. Can I help you? Oh, sorry. My name is Cindy, and this is my sister Allie. Hi. Great. As if we didn't have enough troubles already. Pardon me? You're excused. Just do us a favor and stay out of our way. Well, excuse me! What a creep. I was only trying to be nice. I think he was flirting with me. Ugh. What? Is that so hard to believe? Oops, 
I hope I didn't frighten you. I hope you don't mind. You see, the door was open, so I thought I'd just let myself in. No, it's quite all right. It is your chalet, after all. Well, all right, then. I just came in to tell you we have a call on the telephone in the hallway. A call? I wonder if it's Mom and Dad. Hello? Hello, sweetheart. Oh, hi, Mother. How is everything? I'm afraid your father and I have bad news. We won't be able to make it up this weekend. At least not for a couple of days. The storm is so bad, there's no way we could get through. What? But Mother, we're supposed to have a ski weekend. Do you really expect me and Allie to just stay up here in the chalet all by ourselves? Well, I'm afraid we have no choice, darling. I'm horribly sorry. We'll make it up there as soon as possible. <sighs> all right. I just hope you and Dad make it out okay. Goodbye. I love you. Mother, is that you? Have you forgotten something? Why, hello there. Huh. Who is this? Uh, are you looking for someone in particular? The only person I'm looking for is you, Cindy. You're such a pretty girl, it's a shame I'll have to cut up that pretty face and leave you lying dead in a ditch somewhere. Who do you think you are? Whoever you are. If this is some kind of joke, I don't think it's very funny. You won't think it's very funny when I have my knife jammed deep in your throat. See you soon. <coughs> Ellie! Ellie, what's going on? I saw a strange man outside. He... he had a ski mask on. You dope. Everyone's wearing a ski mask. It's a ski resort. But there's hardly anyone up here, remember? Maybe someone decided to go out for a little while. Take a walk? Don't you know what time it is? What are you trying to do? Wake up the whole chalet? He heard screaming. What's going on in here? Oh, now you've done it. Mr. Davidson, I saw a strange man outside. Now, now, Allie. Don't you be getting cabin fever on me. Everything is just fine, darling. Don't you worry about it. But Mr. Davidson, I saw someone. I know I did. That's enough. You're probably just overtired. Why don't you go off to bed? I apologize on behalf of my sister. She can be a little bit overdramatic sometimes. That's quite all right. Did you get through it to your parents? Yes. Unfortunately, they're going to be delayed in getting here because of the storm. I hope everything will be all right. Oh, and Mr. Davidson, please call me William. William, I got another call from some strange man. I think it was my ex-boyfriend, but I can't be sure. His voice sounded strange. But he said he was going to come down to the chalet. I'm a little worried. Well, not you too, Cindy. Here, I thought older sisters were supposed to be wise. Why don't you just run along to bed and get some sleep? Oh, I don't know. <gasps> oh, but we insist, dear. Sleep can be really good for the mind. Well, okay, if you say so. Ellie, do Mr. and Mrs. Davidson seem off to you? Whatever do you mean? They're perfectly nice, aren't they? I suppose they're nice enough, but it just seems weird that they wouldn't listen to our stories. They would just want us to go straight to our rooms and go to bed. Doesn't that strike you as strange? Now you're the one that's thinking crazy. They just want us to get a good night's sleep. What's so bad about that? And don't even get me started on Brandon. What a weirdo. What's his deal, anyway? And to top it all off, I got an obscene phone call with after Mom and Dad called. Wait, Mom and Dad called? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. They're held up. They won't be able to make it in time. Oh, perfect. Anyways, right after I got a weird call from this guy. Well, who was it? I don't know. I thought it was Derek, but I don't know. It sounded different. But you never know with phone frequencies. The guy on the other end, he told me he was going to come to the chalet and... Who knows what he was going to do next? You should have heard him, Allie. It was the most frightening thing I've ever heard. Maybe it was just Derek, but you know him. He was probably just fooling around, trying to get back at you. He probably didn't mean anything by it. Now come on, let's get to bed. We have a long day of slopes ahead of us tomorrow. Yeah, if it doesn't storm like crazy. <sighs> Good night, Cindy. Good night, Allie. So, Cindy, you think you can break up with me and leave me out the dry like that? I don't think so. I know you're up in that chalet. And wherever you are, I'm coming to find you. You're all mine, babe. <coughs> Allie? Allie? It's not like her to wake up before me. Uh, good morning. <gasps> oh. 
Carol, he scared me. My apologies. We must stop meeting each other like this. I just came to inform you that your complimentary breakfast in bed will be ready shortly. I thank you, but that won't be necessary. I'll be down shortly. As you say, miss. Good morning. Look who's finally awake. <laughs> I'm just teasing. The cold weather does have a way of making other people tired. I can't blame you for sleeping in. Right then. I hope you all enjoy your breakfast. If you need anything, you know who to call. What a freak show. What was that? I wasn't talking to you. We're sitting at the same table. It'd be awfully rude if you didn't include me in your conversation. I'm talking about Carol. I don't know, man. They seem perfectly nice to me. That's just it. Perfectly nice. Too nice. Well, Brandon, I can't say I blame you for being so confused since you think you're so much better than everyone else. Someone as rude as you? You're probably brought up that way. I don't blame you for being so confused as someone actually being nice for a change. You didn't know a thing about me, Blondie, so quit acting like you do. Brandon, just leave the girl alone. Are you sure she didn't mean anything by it? Oh yeah, I'm sure they didn't. They never do. Listen here, Blondie. We're gonna be staying in here for a long time, so I suggest you better show me some respect, or else you're gonna have a bad time. Is that a threat? It could be. Brandon, cut it out. Forget it. You guys can go on without me. I apologize on his behalf. As you can tell, he has a bit of a temper. I don't think I got your name. I'm Cindy, and this is my sister Allie. We were supposed to have a ski weekend with our parents, but, uh, the storm is kind of delaying their arrival. Well, doesn't mean we can't get started on the ski fun without them. Good luck with that. It's coming down so hard you can barely see a thing. You'll be buried alive in snow before you reach the top of the mountains. Oh, perfect. There goes our plan. That's all right. We can spend time with each other until it calms down. Right, Cindy? Sure. We can listen to the radio or watch the television and cozy up by the fire. That does sound most delightful. Speak for yourself. Suddenly, I've lost my appetite. So, Cindy, I assume a girl as beautiful as you is going steady with some fellow back home. Actually, I recently broke up with my boyfriend. Long story. I'm sorry to hear that. Not exactly going steady with anyone myself. Well, I suppose we should get started on eating. We'll need the fuel if we want to get through the day. Right you are. What on earth? Excuse me, sir. Do you need some assistance? Where are you? Hello? How very peculiar. So Justin, what brings you and Brandon up to the mountains? Well, we were just planning to have a fun boys night out. You know, skiing, having fun, meeting new people. What about you and Allie? We were supposed to be with our parents, but the storm is delaying their arrival. I hope they're all right. I'm sure it's nothing bad. How about we turn on the television for a little while? Here, I'll do it. I don't want you to hurt your foot. This just in. It appears that there's been an escape in the local mental asylum. Patient Jeff Kidder has escaped. The police has informed us to tell everyone to lock their doors and stay inside and stay vigilant. Stay tuned for future news on the subject. Oh my gosh. Did you hear that, Carol? All those blasted news reporters. That television is nothing but brain mush if you ask me. Aren't you the least bit concerned? You youngins have nothing to worry about. We're up here in the mountains. Forget about that rubbish. How about we play a game? N no thank you. I think I'm going to go find my sister. Well, I'm always here if you change your mind. Carol, have you seen William? Well, I'm sure he's just chopping wood for the fire. No big deal. Well, I haven't seen him all day. Not even at breakfast. Well, son, if you know William as much as I do, you'd know he gets really invested in his work. Perhaps I should see what's keeping Brandon. Nonsense. Have you forgotten? You're injured. As my mother used to tell me, the one way to get better is lots and lots of rest. Perhaps I can fix you up a bowl of soup, young man. I'll be right back. <sighs> Someone, someone come quick! Justin, what's wrong? There, there's someone in the... What? There was someone in the window. Someone in a ski mask. Oh, I just knew it. I just knew I wasn't saying things. See, Cindy, I told you. Are you sure? Look, Cindy, I know what I saw. All right, all right. You don't have to bite my head off. Well, whatever you saw, Justin, it's not there. But you know what is there? Someone's car. A car. But that can't be. And it's not just anyone's car either. It's Derek's. No way. Allie, you don't think. 
I don't know what to think, but we should call the police or something. What seems to be the problem, girls? Carol, can we use your phone? Well, I'm afraid it's no can do. The blizzard has cut down the phone lines. What? You mean we're stranded up here and we can't even call the police or our parents? Oh, my dears, you worry too much. Here, why don't I make you some soup as well? We don't want soup, lady. We want to get out of here. I understand your frustration, but physical contact is not the answer. If it will make everyone feel better, I'll go outside and check out on this said boogeyman myself. No, you shouldn't go out there alone. At least let William help you. Much like you folks, I haven't seen William all day. He must be really busy at work. I'll be right back. In the meantime, why don't you head off to your rooms and get some sleep? Clearly, this cabin fever is getting to you, ladies. For once, I agree with her. Let's go to bed, Cindy. I'm tired. I just want to go home. I want to go home too, Allie, but we have to stay positive. Especially in these trying times. Let's go. Ooh, it's freezing out here. Whose car is this? Hello? Is anyone there? Don't be shy. You're more than welcome to come inside if you want to warm up. You don't have to stay outside. <gasps> oh, the darn lock. Justin? Justin? The wind closed the door. Can you please let me in? Justin? Please, it's cold out here. Answer me. I'll absolutely catch my death out here if I don't get inside. William, where are you? If you're out here, please tell me you have the keys for inside. I'm freezing. Won't anyone answer me? Has anyone seen William or Carol? We haven't seen them since this morning. Well, isn't that just perfect? The phone lines are down too. I don't know how we're going to contact the police or anything. We need to get out of here. Don't you think we know that man? Well, I'm sure they're around here someplace. Gee, you don't say. Say, toots, why don't you make yourself useful and get some more firewood or something? Well, I can do it. Oh no, Justin, your ankle. I thought your ankle was injured. Oh, I guess it's feeling better. But you were in so much pain just this morning. Well, I guess I made a miraculous recovery. <laughs> what? Um, maybe I should go get the firewood. I'll go get my coat. <gasps> what seems to be the problem? Brendan, I... Uh... What? This little thing? Haven't you ever seen a ski mask before? It's not that, it's just... We are up in the mountains, you know. Ski country. Everyone has a ski mask. It just looks an awful lot like the one I saw that mysterious man wearing last time. What, so you think I'm the mysterious man? I don't know what to think. I, sh I should get going. <sighs> don't you walk away when I'm talking to you. What do I have to do to prove to you that I'm not a bad guy? Please, don't hurt me. Hurt you? Doll, I wouldn't hurt a fly. Please, I'd like to leave now if you don't mind. Please, don't come any closer. <sighs> Wait. Cindy, where are you going? I'm getting out of here. I don't care if it takes me a hundred miles. I don't care if I freeze to death before I get to the next town. I need to get out of here and away from you psychos. Cindy, wait. Be reasonable. Oh, I'm being reasonable, all right? First you and your mysterious recovery from your injury, and then Brandon with the ski mask. You two are in on it, aren't you? Isn't that why Carol and William are missing? I don't know what you're talking about. Just stay away from me, Justin. But Cindy... I said stay away! Uh, <coughs> Cindy, where are you going? Oh, Allie, thank goodness. We have to get out of here. Don't you think I know that? But how? Uh, Derek's car. But where's Derek? I don't know. I haven't seen him this whole time. I just know his car is here. What's going on? You look like you've seen a ghost. I have no time to explain. We just gotta get out of here. <laughs> Allie, don't look. What about the others? They have to get out of here too. 
I haven't seen Carol or William all day. I have reason to believe they're dead. Even more reason to believe that Brandon and Justin are in on it. We have to search his body for keys, and we have to get out of here and drive to town. Are you crazy? We're going to pickpocket a dead guy? Well, what choice do we have? Come on, they have to be in his pocket somewhere. Oh, Derek. Where are they? Hurry up. I think I found them. All right. Uh, sorry, Derek. All right, Allie, get in. Look out! <laughs> Let go of her! Come on, Cindy, let's get out of here. Wait, take us with you. Oh, Justin, I'm so sorry I accused you. Uh, save the sentiment until we get the town. She's right. Come on, I'll drive. Brandon, come on. Brandon! Uh, you guys go on without me. No, Brandon, we're not leaving you. You have to. If you don't leave now, he'll get you too. Go. If you don't go now, I'll never forgive you, Justin. I'll never forget you. What? Where are we going? We can't just leave him. Cindy, we have to. Damn you, turn this car around now. I'm sorry, Cindy, but he's a goner. No! Uh, uh, uh. Justin, go faster, go faster! Oh my god, please go faster! We're going as fast as we can. He's not going to catch us. When we get to town, we need to find the nearest phone. And we have to call the police and tell him he's still here. But what if he leaves? What if he escapes? That won't be likely. They'll be sure to find him. I know they will. They'll never catch him. He's always going to be in the mountains, waiting. Waiting for someone to return. To be his next victim. He'll always be there, I just know it. He'll never leave. He'll never be caught. And until that day comes, he'll just sit there, waiting. He'll still be there. And he won't ever stop.